so another expert another warning uh, this time from Will Hutton uh, I find no grounds for optimism on the economy all the signs are there that a recession is just around the corner but who will admit it in any other uh, world in any, other, in any other world there would be national soul searching Britain's economic growth rate over the past 12 months is half its average over the previous 25 years and set to deteriorate further. Investment is stagnating. Mortgage approvals in March slumped by almost 21%. Car output for domestic for the domestic market has dropped in the same month by 13 and by 12 for export. These uh, are dramatic numbers. To drive the point home, on Friday, we learned that in the first three months of the year, Britain grew at its slowest rate for five years. One, uh, one confirming uh, explanation, one comforting explanation is that it's the beast from the east and that it hit construction. But dig a little deeper, and the coal snap also prompted a surge in demand for electricity and gas, as the, as the Office for National Statistics observed. The weather alone explains little for the setback. Output from manufacturing and services was just as idling in January and February before an ominous, before an ominous gathering um, slide in many areas in March. This should be sounding alarm bells everywhere. But it is, but it, it is plainly why the Bank of England and Governor Mark Carney signalled that an interest raise right, interest raise uh, rise slated for next month may be deferred, and why the pound was sold so aggressively after the news. If there had not been a world boom over the last two years, it is clear that the UK would be hovering on the brink of a recession. Indeed, it is the world. Indeed, as the world economy falters in the months ahead, there is now a real prospect for just that. If you are a passionate Brexiteer, this is just some um, frictional difficulty before the British economy moves into the sunny uplands, riding the boom in a fast-growing, uh, riding the boom in the fast-growing economies of Asia, as it does trade deals a plenty. After all, Ramona's don't draw attention to uh, unemployment falling to a 40-year low. Uh, the companies who threatened to leave instead of, con uh, instead of committing to the UK and the ongoing strength of our uh, high technology sectors. It is true that the unemployment is heartingly low, but unemployment is what economists call a lagging indicator. The last statistic to turn sour in any recession. This reflects what the economic, the economic conditions were 12 months ago. More importantly, it is no longer the sole proxy for labour for the for labour health for the, the health the labour market health. Since the financial crisis, real wages have fallen by a stunning 10 percent. Over the last generation, the UK has become the global global leader in creating low paid, low skill casualized work in any three-year period such is the churn in the labor market that a third of the workforce could find themselves in poverty without either a strong trade uh, trade unions or a burgeoning knowledge economy the condition for working life is one of, prof uh, of profound hardship and stress there is good news to indicate where uh, where new growth might originate from very little, unfortunately. As for the high-tech sectors, Britain had real hopes of growing a 40 billion space industry by 2030, of which a cornerstone was more than our fair share of the great EU space projects Galileo and Copernicus. Now we are to be excluded from Galileo, and in particular, the encryption technologies that drive the highly effective systems for moving government data securely via the new generation of Galileo satellites. It is a tragic loss. The hits, though, keep coming. The EU is, uh, is used its, has used its collective muscle to negotiate an even-handed open skies policy with the US outside the EU. The US is insisting on a deal that hits British airlines very hard. Uh, who should be surprised? 
British scientific research was uh, expecting to win 10 billion more than the UK than the UK government contributed to the EU science budget between 2020 and 27. That prospect is now dead too. Nor can there be any certainty about what Britain's trade relationships will be in the future. At Britain, at present, Britain is the linchpin of the world's greatest free trade area. The 27 members of the EU and another 31 countries with whom free trade agreements are signed and operational. Another 30 with provisional deals about to be put in place. This global EU is the citadel and at the heart of the world's free trading system, setting standards for the production of chemicals to use to the use of data. And that is what the rest of the world follows. There is zero chance that Britain can reproduce this on its own. Everyone outside the closed world of Brexit advocates Knowing that uh, rupturing these relationships and vandalising our high-tech sector, high sector is supreme folly. Thus, uh, thus, the business world is at best watching and waiting. The worst, uh, actively, uh, at worst, actively taking measures to protect itself by, by moving actively to mainland Europe. Figures released by uh, OE, uh, OE, by ODEC, um, that's an acronym but I can't remember what it's for, on Friday, show that inward investment to Britain slumped by over 181 billion over the last year. Outward investment has boomed by 120 billion. This is one of the biggest um, year turnarounds by any other country ever recorded, but it is scarcely reported. Put together, um, Put all this together and Britain faces the greatest economic crisis since since the war. The growth model on which we have relied, inward investment booming because Britain is the heart of the world's greatest free trade area, married to emergent strengths in high technology, depends on access to the market. That has been shattered. And there is nothing to put in its place, but our vastly overpriced housing market depends on that continuing. But if it does not, it could have the severest of consequences. Faced with this challenge, our national debate is dangerously frivolous. The Treasury's pre-referendum warnings about Brexit are suddenly looking more precedent. Those who are convinced, uh, convinced in this debate will, demand, will be demanded by future generations. Our country needs and deserves better. So, again... That you can't argue with these numbers. We are in some serious trouble, and it's all because we are leaving the EU. You know, I keep on saying to these people time and time again, look at what these experts are saying, look at what they are doing. But again, you had oh, Kraus Rod one guy, and I know he'll wet his pants for me talking about him. Um, but he was he was like, oh, you don't understand. All these experts, they're all like pro EU, and I'm like. No, they're not. They're basically just reporting on what <laughs> of what their expertise. This is what experts do. And here's the thing. You need these experts. Because if we get into some serious financial shit, then you're going to need these experts to help you get them out. But if these experts suddenly turn around and go, the only option is to rejoin the EU, you know... <laughs> Uh, which it probably will be, but even then, uh, there's another article that basically that's basically puts it even plainer. Even if we do rejoin the EU, um, it will stabilize, you know, restabilize the economy. But all these institutions that have left, they're not coming back. You know, we, you would have to massively earn, um, re-earn trust in Europe, and what they in, in the report. They go so far as to say the only way we could do that is if we rejoin the euro. If, if we join the euro and prove that we are committed to Europe. And that's good. I want that to happen. Because you had, I released a clip a couple of days ago about um, a couple of like big endlessly representatives meeting with the House of Lords. And the couple of, the time before that they had an economic expert from Cambridge who basically said... Look, the future of world economies is not based on sole um, 
single trade countries with one country. It is bilateral trade agreements with you know with multilateral countries. So this the idea that the single market is this colossal failure isn't because there are other blocks forming. You have America might have pulled out of it, but Japan, um, Australia, and New Zealand are committed to forming the Trans-Pacific Partnership. That is an economic block. There is one forming in the Caribbean, the Caribbean Economic Union. There is one forming in uh, South Africa, uh, South Africa, the South African Trade Union. There is the um, South American one forming with Brazil, Argentina, uh, Chile, uh, and I think Venezuela. And I think there's maybe uh, other countries as well, but I can't remember which, which ones are involved. But they are all forming because they are coming to realize that one country is not as good as several countries going to bargain together. And that is, and that is just not one uh, expert's opinion. That is, if you look at what all experts are looking at, and you know, looking at you know future economic trends, then it's more likely economic blocks are going to are going to form, and us deciding we're going to leave is ridiculous. We should be allying ourselves more closely with the EU than ever before. But no, we've got idiots who think that sovereignty somehow matters when I've explained hundreds of times we are a sovereign nation and that, hey, to make these new trade deals that you want, you are going to have to give up sovereignty which all of a sudden they don't matter about because for some reason it's not with the EU, but for some reason it's fine to do it with America and other countries who are basically going to rinse us. Why? Because we are going to be so desperate and we are going to be put in such a bind that our... Uh, that the... You know, that, uh, you know, that Liam Fox is going to sign any trade agreement he wants. But the thing is, 80% of our economic... Of our economy, depends on service industries and guess what the only um trade deal and area that deals specifically with services is the single market if liam fox cannot guarantee service industry access to any of these trade deals we are going to be fucked massively and we've got no one to blame than the people who voted for brexit and I know why people often come and are angry at me, because I'm pointing these out. But these are problems we need to talk about. The fact that the House of Lords is the only place where these discussions are being had says a lot. And I don't like the House of Lords. I want to make that very clear. But the fact that these discussions are the only place where this is happening, thank God for the House of Lords. That's all I can say.